Baffin Island is truly unique. It's one of the world's wild wonders. Looking down from the air, all you can see is lakes, fjords, glaciers, and mountains. It's the fifth largest island on the planet, about the same size as Spain, but it's so sparsely populated that there are fewer people living here than in my small village back home. The plane takes you into a small Inuit settlement called Pangnitung. Pang itself is a remote, isolated community. Most of the year it's bound in by the pack ice, so they're really welcoming to any outsiders. Once the pack ice and bergs have broken up and moved off, you can go by boat right up the fjord. And once you start walking, it's as wild as it gets. There are no roads, no vehicles, no phones. It's bliss. To get to base camp took about a week, carrying everything you need in a stupidly heavy pack. It was about 35 kilos of food, fuel, climbing and camping gear. I could barely get the thing off the ground. Baffin Island's within the Arctic Circle. And though this is the summer and you get nearly 24 hours of daylight, you still have that biting Arctic wind. There's just hundreds and hundreds of miles of wilderness, of glaciers, rivers, lakes, and of some of the most impressive granite mountains found anywhere in the world. Vegetable stock, freeze-dried tomatoes, beef jerky, and hot chili. I'm having it with potatoes. It's gonna rock. that you can't really describe in words. The awe of it, the grandeur. I mean, Asgard is named after the Norse realm of the gods, and it could not be a more fitting name. Bridge over the Weasel River was swept away a few years ago in high floods. So the only way of getting across it now is by rope, and it's absolutely raging. This being the Arctic summer, the glaciers are melting and charging the rivers with huge volumes of water. With no bridge, we had to cross on a rope traverse. We call it a Tyrolean. So you go hand to hand across the waters. Someone hefty like me is just above the spray. But if the rope came loose, then whoosh, you'd be swept out to the Arctic Ocean and be food for the polar bears. The thought of what would happen if that rope snapped, or if you even took a dunking, it is just unthinkable. To travel up the valley, you have to battle across these rivers over and again. It's probably the most dangerous thing you do here, not to mention the coldest. Just had my first view of Asgard. It is unbelievably imposing and daunting. It's very difficult to get a sense of scale out here. The air is so clear and everything is so big. But those walls on Asgard are well over a thousand meters high, perhaps 1200 meters, so three times the height of the Empire State Building. That's just that chunk of vertical rock you can see behind me. It's a, a really daunting, imposing, Fabulous mountain. This is as wild as it gets. You're a very, very long way away from rescue or help here. You really are on your own. It's about five o'clock in the morning and we're walking in across the glacier to the start of our route. We've really hit the absolute perfect window. About 10 days ago, all of this was about thigh deep in snow. So it had been really difficult and dangerous crossing the glacier. You never know where there's gonna be a crevasse because it's hidden by snow. But right now, it is perfect. The temperature's warming up, the sun has already hit the route. Now is the absolute perfect time. To get to the base of the climb, you have to cross the glacier. And that normally would be an easy job. But this time round, all you have are climbing shoes. So it's really, really sketchy. It 
it is an intimidating place to be, there's no doubt about that. All you can think about is how many steps you can take before you need to take a rest, what you're going to eat next, where you're going to sleep. All of the complexities and stress of modern life all of a sudden just seem to be irrelevant. It's pretty special, huh? Finally, after all these months of preparation and the hard days yomping in with heavy pack to get here, we are at the base of our route. It's up there way, way above me. If it takes us 20 to 30 hours from here till we're back to base camp, I think we'll be pretty happy. Every single little piece of this is a challenge, a technical challenge. And uh, it's big. It's really big. <laughs> Both Lizzie and Jeff are far superior climbers to me. And it's really made me quite aware of where my weaknesses are which are pretty much everywhere. I am not a natural climber. I'm quite big and hefty. Most climbers are, are built more like Lizzie, really, kind of lithe and sinuous, whereas I'm kind of bulky and muscular, and, and all of this excess weight is really heavy to lug up a mountain. The climb on Asgard will definitely be the most serious that I've ever done. It's well over 1,200 metres of vertical climbing, and almost all of it is right at the edge of my ability. It's going to be one of the greatest challenges I've ever taken on. Out here, you really are so aware of your vulnerability and your fragility. Any tiny mistake could be life-threatening. If you pull off a rock or a boulder and it bounces down onto one of your friends below, then that is catastrophic. The way that you climb granite cracks is by jamming your fingers or your hands into a crack and then turning it so that it cams and locks into the crack and you can pull on it and give yourself leverage, which is great, but after a while it really starts to take its toll on your fingers, which just get cut to shreds. Loose rock is definitely the scariest thing on Asgard. There is an awful lot of it that just comes whizzing down past your ears and it's like bullets. Um, if it hit you, it would be curtains instantly. After a while, we were trying to, to just suck the seeping water off the rock face because we were so dehydrated. There's no doubt you're exposed. If anything goes wrong, there's no helicopter coming to save you. You're on your own. But that's kind of great. In the modern world, we're, we're very positive and constrained. To have your own success, failure, survival even, completely in your own hands, that's totally liberating. The exposure, the mind-blowing beauty, it makes you feel very free and very, very alive. We're getting late in the day. I guess we're probably going for about 14 hours now. But uh, Asgard has one last sting in the tail because the hardest two pitches of the whole route are right at the top. But hopefully I've got just a little bit of the gas left in the tank for this last couple of hours. Ooh. Lizzie is on what's probably the hardest pitch of the whole climb. It's a rather horrible looking chimney. Sun's gone now. There's a bit of a chill. Kind of makes everything feel a little bit more serious. To begin with, I think I felt quite confident. I was uh, doing some of the leading, which is being the first person to go ahead, putting in the gear. Um, but then as we started getting higher onto the mountain, I started getting tired. I started to get frightened as well. I don't think I've ever spent quite so long under so much stress, under so much panic, it sounds like a massive exaggeration, but seriously, every single place you put your fingers or your feet could be the difference between life and death. We've had less than a litre of water in 17 hours on this thing, and the hardest part is still to come. Broken, absolutely broken.
this next bit looks evil. Just that constant need for vigilance for 25, 27 hours, it, it just completely drains you. The amount of adrenaline that you just have zinging around your body, after a while, it starts to fray your nerves and all of a sudden you start making bad decisions and, and things don't go as they should because you're just constantly on edge. I haven't been going since five o'clock in the morning. Your body is just screaming out. Making the summit of Asgard with Lizzie and Jeff in that strange arctic half-light twilight looking out to the horizon and just seeing hundreds of stunning wild miles without trace of human beings. It's one of the greatest moments of my life. It's one o'clock in the morning and I am absolutely spent. But it's been worth it. Every single direction you look off as far as you can see is just total wilderness. Nothing but some of the most awe-inspiring jaw-dropping mountains on the planet. But for now, just for a couple of minutes, you can just stand and enjoy one of the last great unspoiled wildernesses on the planet. That's pretty special.